Flight attendants of Reddit. What do the passengers not know? There are sometimes body parts in the storage area near your luggage, when they are flying transplants for hospitals. Also your pets are in the same area as well. I used to work with elderly people and one of my clients was a former pilot that finally quit when he realized in the middle of a flight his dementia had progressed and he couldn't remember where he was supposed to be flying to. Meaning he had been flying for a commercial airline with dementia for quite some time before that. Ha 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 ha. Terrifying during the moment. Sure. But a hilarious hypothetical. Ladies and gentlemen. I seem to have forgotten where I was going. A. Hey. Duck it. Who wants to go to Hawaii? We've got just enough fuel to get there. And I've always wanted to visit. A flight attendant told me that in the event of a situation where passengers have to cover their heads you do not lock your fingers overhead but place one hand on top of the other. If something falls on your hand head, you'll still have one good hand to use. I'd take that a step further and say to put your non-dominant hand on top. That way, your most useful hand will be the one that survives. If you're stuck on a desert island alone you'll thank yourself later. I'm a flight attendant. So many incidents occur on the plane that everyday passengers don't see or consider. My last flight an elderly man accidentally sheet on the floor. Stepped in it. And walked on like it was nothing. Do not walk around barefoot. Pee and poop happens. All over. I feel like I witness an accident regularly, in their seat or in the lav. People get nosebleeds. Or their wounds open. Obviously when we land. It is thoroughly cleaned. But in flight our resources are limited. Don't change your baby's diaper on the tray table. This also happens all the time. It's unsanitary and people use the tray table to eat. Put their personal things on. Etc. Lastly. There are multiple injuries caused from flight attendants lifting heavy bags to be friendly. And then they're out of the job 4 months to the year, on average. If you pack it. You left it. If it's too heavy for you. It's too heavy for us. Happy flying. Yeah. How much the pilots sleep. If it ranges in either extremes that's worrying. I was cabin crew for 5 years, long haul only, and whilst we've all passed the exams and tests and blah 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 and have a refresher every year. You never really know how anyone will react in any kind of emergency. Firemen and police are tested on a weekly basis. But in the 5 years I was crew. There was nothing I personally experienced that put any of the proper training into use. And I'd like to think I'd not not freeze or fall to pieces. But you just never know. So definitely pay a bit of attention for the 3 minutes of the safety demo and figure out where the nearest exit and its alternative are because you never know. You might end up having to help yourself. Edit, I will also wager the knowledge of flight attendants on this thread shall be turned into a Daily Mail news article for tomorrow. As a former aviation journalist I can tell you a few things. Yes. On transoceanic flights there is a cabin for crew to get some sleep. No. You won't be invited in for fun times. On some newer planes there's also a hold for people who have died on the flight. No. You won't be invited in for fun times either. If you piss off the cabin crew they will fart on you. The pressure on aircraft makes you naturally gassy and it's easy to puff one off in the face of an annoying jet while bending down to speak to someone on the opposite side of the aisle. If a meal service is on offer go for the kosher option. So you know it was prepared that day. I dated a flight attendant for a while. One thing I haven't seen mentioned is that sometimes delays are caused by flight attendants not showing up and the airline scrambling to get a backup scheduled. Like a flight attendant was partying too hard last night and decided to call off 2 hours before that $1500 cross ocean flight you just popped on. She loved to party as did a lot of her co-workers and were often hungover or out of it on flights. Even though pay was sheet their union made it very hard to get fired so call offs were kind of no big deal. Former flight attendant here. Keep your shoes on. Keep. Your. Shoes. On. The floor is so filthy it's ridiculous. And that isn't water you are feeling. Also if you ask to be upgraded to a better seat in economy. 
we will have you pay. However, if you just sit down and act inconspicuous, we won't notice or care. Edit, I mean moving up from an economy seat to a better economy seat. Don't plop down in business and first. Edit 2, I mean if you upgrade to an unoccupied seat. If you try to sit in a seat assigned to someone else, you will be either as beat or asked to return to your assigned seat. Just started at an airline. There isn't as much CCTV as you may think. We can often be working 6 days in a row on minimum rest. Treat us nicely please. Your plane is probably broken in some place. Whether that be in the cabin or the aircraft itself. Edit. Obviously if it's not safe. The aircraft won't take off. But small are often broken. We have to ask the captain to remove you from the flight if you're being an asshole. They will say yes. Even on the smaller aircraft. Crew will find a place to sleep. Someone has probably thrown up on the floor by your seat. There's really no problem with the left phalange. My late mom was a Delta stewardess for 33 years. She used to tell awesome PG stories. And I'm sure she had a hundred more that were unfit for my innocent ears. Like any kid. I never really paid attention. But most of the ones I remember were about famous and or drunk people. Or famous drunk people. One common story was about the Delta miracles. Passengers in wheelchairs would board the plane before everyone else. But they had to wait for everyone else to disembark before they could get rolled out. It is apparently common for people to be healed during mid-flight and no longer need assistance when they reach their destination. Edit, my apologies to the folks that have legit uses for one-way wheelchair trips. Let's meet in the middle and accept that there is indeed some humor to be seen here. Dash. Not flight attendant but former airport security. Clearly. The passengers don't know that that joke they've just thought of we've heard about 5 million times. And the smile and laugh are fake all the way through. Also. The little jokes the personnel will tell you are more like stand up than improv. We see the exact same situations thousands of times and all have our little jokes that are usually tried and proven by the end of the first two weeks of work. Edit, as people, guessing Americans, are all saying sar isn't funny. I wasn't sar. I worked for a private contractor in France, more specifically the airport. Americans going through were always amazed at how it wasn't as tense as the US. Probably like Louis CK said. That most people would freak out if they actually thought about what they were doing. To paraphrase, I mean. You're sitting in a chair, in the sky. Everyone should be going who oh ah ho ah hang on. The entire time. This is why I love flying. I'm sighting. Sipping champagne. Looking out of the ground 30,000 feet below. Barreling along at 700 miles per hour. In an aluminum tube. I'm not a flight attendant but I work the ramp. To elaborate on the body parts we send full bodies on planes alert. Some in caskets some not. Twice in the 7 years I've been doing this as fluid leaked out of the boxes the bodies are in and got all over the luggage. That's it. I'm going to make an app that rates airplane food and I'm calling it snacks on a plane. Flight attendant for a European airline for the past 6 years here. I'm late to the party but I'll still chime in. Lots of passengers panic when the flight is delayed for technical reasons or when they see the maintenance guys board the aircraft. There's really no need to be. That just means that we're aware of a problem and won't budge until it has been resolved. Much better to be aware of a problem on ground than at 36,000 feet. The pilots do thorough pre-flight checks to make sure that everything is okay. And the engineers check the aircraft at the end of the day. Flying is safer now than it ever has been. No need to worry. Yes smoking really is an issue on board. Please please don't do it. We're all trained in fi fighting but it's still extremely dangerous to do so on board. Vaping on the other hand is completely harmless but forbidden anyway. Purely because it may entice other passengers to light up real cigs. The only real problem with e cigs are the lithium batteries. Many passengers see us as glorified waitresses and waiters. And to be honest we are for 70% of the trip. But we are also highly trained professionals who are able to deal with any situation on board. 
There are assholes on almost every flight. For sure but they are outnumbered massively by nice people, depending on the destination. Stereotypes exist for a reason. A simple smile and politeness will get you a long way with most crew. What really makes those airline peanuts so salty? These pretzels are making me thirsty. If you're sitting next to William Shatner and he has the window seat. Probably gonna be a sheety flight. Every once in a while I like to get out of the plane and walk around to stretch my legs. The middle guy gets the arm rests you animals. Airplanes fly broken more often than not. Dated a chick who was a far and had a brother that was a flight mechanic at Sky Harbor. In Phoenix. They told some crazy stories about planes that flew with stuff that may or may not have been functioning properly. The duct tape game is strong. Count the seat backs to the closest exit. Good chance you won't be able to see in some types of accidents. Edit spelling. An airplane can fly with one engine. And if an engine catches on fire. They have the means of extinguishing it while it air. Yes we know when you're upset angry. When we say see you next time to certain passengers as they deplane after arrival. That's our code word for duck you. I hope you never fly with us again. AWH this makes me sad I always try to be a good passenger when I fly. I was a baggage handler for a major us carrier at a hub airport about 10 years ago. The cargo hold often carries more than just your bags. Mail. Light cargo. And dead people are often flying with you. Sometimes there is too much baggage on full flights. Instead of removing baggage and delaying flights. The handler in charge will often just lie about how much weight is stowed within the baggage area. A bag marked fragile will get thrown just as hard as every other bag being quickly packed into the bin. In a year of doing that job. I never witnessed anyone steal items from within a bag or suitcase. It is possible that handlers that may have been thieves just didn't do it in front of me. The derogatory term other airport personnel use for baggage handlers is ramp rats. Nobody that works in aviation calls the paved ground area outside the tarmac. Everybody calls it the ramp. If your bag misses a connecting flight, it will often get thrown onto a different plane going to the same city. Summertime thunderstorms cause all sorts of delays and lost baggage. Fars and most airline crew get to designate a person to fly free on flights with space available. These people are referred to as SAR or space available passengers. They are often found waiting on standby and can recognize one another by the smell of anxiety. Also, attendants usually hook them up something fierce on flights knowing that they are SAR. As each attendant has his or her own SAR designee that they would like other attendants to hook up. I dated a flight attendant of a major Asian airline. Apparently when they turn 28-30 or so. They are expected to get married and quit and if you don't. They'll reassign you to a ground job. I'm a flight attendant. First. I wouldn't recommend drinking coffee or hot tea from the plane. It's made with the potable water and those tanks are rarely cleaned out. None of the crew usually drink it. I had a passenger on one of my flights fill his water bottle up using the sink in the lavatory and I stressed to him that it wasn't a good idea but he didn't care lol. Second. We aren't paid till the main cabin door closes so we are ready to leave just as fast as you are. When there are delays. Itching at the cabin crew isn't going to help anything. We are waiting around just like you and wanting to get back to our families as well. Third. Smoking your e-cig in the lab will set off the detector. Fourth. Bringing a bag of candy or treat to thank the flight crew will most likely get you free drinks or a seat upgrade. I always hook people up lol. Not a flight attendant and not sure if everyone knows this or not but I once fell asleep probably before we took off and wasn't yawning or chewing during the ear popping. I woke up in excruciating ear pain. The flight attendant got me two styrofoam cups with warm. Wet paper towels in the ends. She placed them over my ears and I felt way better. That flight attendant was awesome. Former jet engine mechanic here. Those drop down masks are orange because if there's an explosive decompression. It's going to get real foggy. Real fast. Went through one on a KC-135 years and years ago. My department. 
we don't start getting paid till that door is closed so we want you to get to your seat asap. We talk about you. The flamboyant fars like to do BCs, boner checks, when we do trash. I laughed when I heard about that. UMMI don't really know much more. Or can't think of it.